Well, good morning to you all, and happy Father's Day to those of you that that applies to. I hope that this day turns out great for you, and thank you for joining us. Don't forget, we're asking for your help by filling out our online survey. If you can't find it on the link below, then just go to our webpage at monavilla.church. It's right there on the front page. If you just click on it, it should open up the survey and then send that back to us. Also, uh, it's just one of those many tools that we need when we're considering plans for the future, uh, even though we are just entering in phase one. We are also uh, sending out some of those surveys by mail for those without internet access as well, because we really do need to hear from all of our churchgoers. And of course, we do have something special for our fathers today. Uh, we are going through very tough times, the likes of which we've never seen before, and leading your family wisely really seems next to impossible. But today, Pastor Dwight will be talking about how to seek God's wisdom, not just common sense, but the mind of Christ. And uh, we are hoping that it will give all of you, not just the dads, hope and confidence during these uncertain times. And stick around afterwards because we have a special bonus video for our dads that should put a real smile on your face. In fact, we want to pray a special blessing on our dads right now. Dear Father in heaven, we are asking for your heart and your mind to be revealed to the fathers listening today. Lord, we live in a time of such confusion and foolishness because everybody does what is right in their own eyes because they've rejected you, so who else are they going to turn to? But may we learn how to hear from you. Rulers and kings, they're going to pass away. Philosophies and agendas that are going to fade, but you and your truth will stand firm and unwavering for all of eternity. So, Lord, during these painfully difficult times, may we discover your wisdom. And may dads especially lead their families unwaveringly, following that wisdom, untainted by anybody else's selfish desires and agendas. May we patiently seek to have the mind of Christ and to move by the power of your Spirit together in unity because each of us are being guided by the same voice, your voice, Lord. We worship you because you are are all that will remain. Amen and amen. I cast my mind to Calvary Where Jesus bled and died for me I see His wounds, His hands, His feet My Savior Lord that cursed tree His body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing. of dawn the sun of heaven rose again oh trampled death where is your sting the angels roar for Christ the King oh praise the of the Lord our God, oh praise His name forevermore, for endless days we will sing. In Rome. 
robes of white the blazing sun shall pierce the night and i will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on jesus face It's so good to be with you again. This is Father's Day that we're remembering. I've been blessed by wonderful fathers in my life, and my father and my father-in-law. And today I'd like to talk to you about my father-in-law because he discovered a secret, a secret that makes all the difference in the world. And he shared that secret with me, and I want to share it with you. It is a wonderful day. Our fathers mean so much. They make great sacrifices. They live for the Lord. They serve the Lord, and they give so much of themselves, and we thank the Lord for them. I would just want to say this. We have a world that is challenging Christianity, and they're saying, do we really need Christianity? Do we not have so much wisdom? Do we not understand? Is not our world so wise that we don't need God's wisdom anymore? And this is what my father-in-law discovered. He discovered the world is marvelous, and we have to marvel at the world in which we live because of the creations that we have. The world has changed an awful lot, and we have to give a lot of credit to science. Now, this is why it's so important, because we need to be thankful and we need to understand the wisdom of the world, how that we've been able to profit by that, and it's been good to us. But there's something missing, and the gauntlet is thrown down by the Apostle Paul when he writes in Corinthians, the first chapter. He says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world, and he despised things, and the things that are not to nullify those that are, so that no one may boast before him. For it, be, it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become to us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness and holiness and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. And here is the secret. We look at all this great knowledge and what the world is saying today. When you put it all together, if you give us enough time, we can solve all our problems. We don't need God. And they're saying, look at the great inventions that we have. Now, you need to understand if we're going to solve this problem and figure out what we're talking about. Here is the thing that we have. God says man was created to live in three worlds. The world of matter, that's the material world. All that is happening, that's all the senses, taste, touch, 
smell, all of these come together. And when you put them together, it gives us all the wisdom of science. And we thank God for that science. And we're very, very thankful for it. But there's not just the material world. There is also the soulish world. And the soulish world is the world of the mind, mind, emotion, and will. So think with me as a, a three-legged stool. One leg is materialism, material world, matter, and all that we've learned from that. But then there's the world of mind. And if you put the mind and the emotion and the will together, we gain great wisdom all down through history. The accumulated wisdom of the world has been brought together in the wisdom of the world. And the world is saying, See, you leave us with the wisdom of the world and we can solve all the world's problems. And Paul says, no, that is not enough. And this is what my father-in-law discovered, that there is a third world. There is the world of matter and there's the world of soul. That's mind, emotion, and will. And there's the world of the spirit. And the spirit world is a mystery. It is something that is not revealed by natural man. So all of this wisdom that we have is natural wisdom. And God says there is a wisdom that is God's wisdom. And that's where he goes on in the second chapter, the whole second chapter of First Corinthians is dealing with this whole matter of the world is limited. There is a narrowness in the knowledge that the world has because it leaves God out. Because it is the fear of God that is the beginning of wisdom. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says. He says, when I came to you, brothers, I did not come to you in eloquence of superior wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony concerning God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. It came to you in, the we I came to you in weakness and in fear. And with much trembling, my message and my preaching were not with wisdom and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the power of the Spirit of God, so that the wisdom, rather, so that your faith might not rest on the wisdom of men, but upon the power of God. So Paul says, I didn't want to confuse you with eloquent words, because confusion comes when we start looking to the wisdom of the world. And Paul says, there is another wisdom. There is a wisdom that comes from the Spirit of God, and it is only through the cross that we are able, in, able to enter into that world. So this is the challenge that's before us. How do we enter into this world of the Spirit? Now, Paul says there are three problems with the world. The world's wisdom, it's too narrow. It only sees life without God. Our problem is not that we're anti-intellectual. It is not that we're opposed to knowledge. It is that we're opposed to knowledge that is knowledge without God. Because if God is not a part of your life, there is something really missing. And so here is the glory, and this is what I discovered from my father-in-law, that there is a world of the Spirit See, when we go to the edge of all that we know concerning the material world, we come to a place where we can go no further. And yet, even there, our brilliant men are looking and they're saying, oh, there seems to be something more beyond this physical world. And we realize that there is a mystery there. But how do you get into this world, this spiritual world? And that's where God says there's only one way in you will discover the spiritual kingdom of God when you come to the cross of Jesus Christ. It is the cross of Jesus Christ that opened the way for men. So here we are. We are separated from God. Hear what the Word of God says. We are, however, speaking a message of wisdom among mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who come to nothing. No, we speak of wisdom, secret wisdom that is from God. It has been writ hidden to us, and God has revealed it with his glory. 
before time began. This was before the end of the beginning of creation. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, if they would have understood him, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Here's the amazing thing. Men in all their wisdom, you would say, we, we understand greatness, we understand great minds, but when God, the creator, God incarnate, stands before us, instead of recognizing him as the greatest mind in the world, they said, crucify him, do away with him. If they were so wise, why could they not see the God of glory? And this is an amazing thing that God was here because God loved us and he created us and he yet he chose to come to live in our world. He wanted to live in our world to live with us because he wanted to be present with us. The glory of the gospel, and we have that even in the Christmas, in the whole fact that Jesus was called Emmanuel. That means God with us. God says, I want to come and live with you. And when he came to live with us and to give us deliverance and to give us a, the meaning for life, instead of listening to him, we said, crucify him. And they killed the Lord of glory. It shows how limited man's wisdom really is. He cannot see this spiritual dimension. So here we have a world a matter that we're so thankful for and all the sciences and all that's been accomplished, but it lacks God. Here we have the whole world of psychology and wisdom and man's thinking, and yet they cannot discover God because we cannot discover God through man's natural reasoning. You say, then how do we get the spiritual side? How do we get the spiritual realm that brings all of our life together? Because you see, what we're trying to do is like a jigsaw puzzle and the pieces are missing. But the missing pieces are God. God completes the whole puzzle. Then matter and emotion and mind come together under the control of the spirit world. And the spirit of God comes and reveals to us truth and how that we can live our lives. And so my father-in-law said, Dwight, listen, God's come and revealed himself in the cross of Jesus Christ. And this is the way by which you can enter in to the spirit-filled life. And when the spirit of God is in our life, he directs, he corrects, he balances. And then we go on and we read this. No eye has seen, no ear heard, no man conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. So here is the spirit world that is revealed to us. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the man's spirit within him? That's uh, people going to say, I understand what you're thinking. I understand your mind. No, you really don't know this inner thoughts. You don't know the inner thoughts of my being. I understand my inner thoughts. And that's because I have a spirit that understands me. Now here our passage is saying, only the spirit of God can come and reveal those deep things, those things, those secrets of life. And it says they, we cannot know them except the spirit of God reveals them. We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we have speak. It is not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, expressing spiritual truth in spiritual words. The man without the spirit does not accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and they cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man makes judgments about all things, but he cannot, he himself cannot be judged or be subject to these judgments. Why? The world cannot judge us because they don't have the Spirit of God. But God in his grace and his mercy has come to us, and through the cross we can receive 
the grace of God, we can receive the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God comes and he takes this all this knowledge of the world and all the world all the world of mind as well as matter and we can understand that but there is that peace that is missing and the peace is the fear of god and that's where the apostle paul says it is through god in him we live and move and have our being there is no wisdom that is beyond the wisdom of god you say how do i get the Spirit of God. That's where you come to the cross. And cro the cross of Jesus Christ cancels out man's pride, man's self-centeredness, cancels it out, and then it gives to us forgiveness. It gives us cleansing. He comes and makes us a new creation. He transforms us into his children. And as his children, now we have all three legs on the stool. We can, there's a balance because the spiritual world gives us balance to the material world and to the psychological world. And the word of God is there and he's been revealed to us. And so here is what I'm saying to you. Here is the spirit of God that is available. You say, how do you receive the spirit of God? The spirit of God is received by faith. Jesus Christ said, I give to you the Spirit. When a man receives Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, the Spirit of God comes and dwells within you. He becomes your teacher. He begins to reveal what the material world and the world of the mind is all about, and he brings balance to them all. And so he says to us, here is the joy that I give you, that your life can be full, and you'll know it, eternal life. There is only one way to find eternal life, and that is by Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, that we receive by faith. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. And this is where all the pieces of the puzzle begin to fit together. Here is the joy that I present to you. In the Spirit of God, his revelation, what he will do to our hearts and mind, that's the thing that's so amazing, that the Spirit of God is given to men. And it was God's intention that we would know the Spirit of God. What? Don't you know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost? And he said, the Spirit of God comes to dwell within you to be your teacher. Oh, it doesn't mean that we know everything, but we now have the equipment. You see, in this room, in this room, there are all kinds of incredible pictures, music, things that are taking place, but we can't see them because we don't have the, the equipment, the right equipment to bring the television pictures out, to bring the radio waves out, to be able to see them. But you see, if you have the right equipment, then you're able to see all these things. And God is saying, I want to give you the right equipment. I want to give you the Spirit of God through the Spirit of God, you are able to discern what is the meaning of the physical world, what is the meaning of the mental world, the soulish part. He says, but it is only through the Spirit of God. Now, my challenge to you this Father's Day, fathers, we need men that are filled with the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ says, this is a free gift. I give this to my children that come to me in faith and believe me. And he says, here is the secret. Allow my spirit to come to dwell within your heart. You say, how do I do that? You ask him to come by faith. I was talking to a young man. I said, have you ever been filled with the spirit of God? He says, yes, I have. Yeah, I says, when did that happen? He says, well, it just happened the other day. I was reading in God's word that these men asked the Spirit of God to fill their life, and they prayed and asked that the Spirit of God would fill their life, and they received Christ as their personal Savior. And when a person receives Christ as their personal Savior, they become the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God actually comes to dwell within them. So here, all of the pieces of the puzzle come together when we receive the Spirit of God by faith. I want to encourage you this day 
This is not for some very special people or for preachers. This is for all born-again believers. This is the gift that God gives to everyone that comes to him by faith. The book of Romans says, he that doesn't have the Spirit of God doesn't belong to God at all. So you must receive the Spirit of God when you receive Christ as your personal Savior. He will come to dwell and guide you and teach you. This Father's Day, may this be a decision you make. Make a decision that the Spirit of God will come and rule in your life. He will become your teacher. He will guide you. He will reveal these things to you. The wisdom, we don't have to look to the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of the world is too narrow. But the wisdom of God is the full picture. It is all the pieces of the puzzle. They come together. We have to study our word. We have to study, the, understand the, the leading of the Spirit of God and allow the Spirit of God to rule in our heart and he will become our teacher and he will guide us. We don't see it automatically, but it comes as we seek with an open heart the direction of the Spirit of God. May this be your prayer. Spirit of God, lead me, guide me, and he will come and he will lead you and he will guide you. Listen to what he has to say and obey him because he will bring all these pieces and put them together. This is the secret of life. The Spirit of God comes to dwell within the heart of his children that accept him by faith. This Father's Day, may this be true of your life. May you experience the fullness of the Spirit of God in your life as he comes and becomes your teacher. And we'll praise God for that. Let me pray for you. Lord, I want to pray for fathers today. They're so special. And they made such sacrifices and they've given so much. And they've been there to protect us, to guide us and direct us. Now, Lord, I pray for the fathers that they might discover as well the fullness of the power of the Spirit of God in their life. And that a life led by the Spirit of God will know new revelation, new understanding and new balance. Lord, we are so thankful when Paul came, he didn't come with excellence of words. He came with simple faith, and he says, Oh, that you might receive this power of God, the very life of God to dwell within you and transform your life for the days that are ahead. And I just believe, God, that you're going to do this in the hearts of the fathers because you're a gracious God, and in your grace you give us the very presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Break the walls apart, open the heavens. Almighty God, you are overcomer, defender of my heart. And by your power, the oceans open wide, your fire falls down, heaven and earth collide. Defender of my heart I hope this morning has been encouraging to you, especially to the dads. I realize how complicated things are right now in navigating your families through such furiously uncharted waters. We can't rely on what we did last time because this is all so unprecedented. So now more than ever, we need to seek the voice of God. And I hope that today has been a step in the right direction. Well, until next week, we love you, we miss you, wash your hands, and stick around for our special Father's Day bonus video, where I got a little bit of help from four other guys in our attempt to, to bring some smiles. Now, I realize dad jokes don't always make you smile, but oftentimes when we tell the jokes and you groan, it makes a smile. So no matter what, somebody's going to come out of this smiling. And you may be wondering, when does a dad joke become, when does a joke become a dad joke? Well, when it becomes apparent. So there you go. Five guys telling you some dad jokes. What is the least spoken language in the world? Sign language. <laughs> My daughter yelled, Dad, you haven't listened to one word I've said, have you? What a strange way to start a conversation with me. Hilarious. My friend keeps saying, cheer up, man, it could be worse. You could be stuck underground in a hole full of water. I know he means well. <laughs> Today my son asked, can I have a bookmark? I burst into tears. 10 years old, and he still doesn't know my name is Dave. Don't trust Adams. They make up everything. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs>
My wife asked me, how do I look? I thought it was a weird question. Everyone knows you look with your eyes. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Did you hear the news? FedEx and UPS are merging. They're going to be fed up from now on. <laughs> Uh, I actually kind of like that. Why did the Invisible Man turn down the job offer? He couldn't see himself doing it. What's the best part about living in Switzerland? I don't know, but the flag is a big plus. <laughs> so if you know the flag, then you know it's a big plus. Five-fourths of people admit that they're bad with fractions. I do like that one. That's a good one. The server at the restaurant was so rude. They said, sorry about your weight. I know I need to go to the gym, but you don't have to point it out. Eh, eh. The cashier at the store asked if I wanted my milk in a bag. Obviously, I just wanted it left in the carton. Hmm. What time did the man go to the dentist? Tooth hurty. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> oh boy. What's Forrest Gump's password? One Forest One. <laughs> I used to have a job at a calendar factory, but I got fired because I took a couple days off. <laughs> People keep talking about having a dad bod. I see it more as a father figure. What do you call a factory that sells passable products? A satisfactory. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, oh, I, I already like this one. I haven't even read the whole thing yet. Clark Kent goes out to eat and the waitress asks, soup or salad? Clark looks around nervously and replies, no soup or salad, just a regular salad for a regular guy. <laughs> that guy kills me, he's great. Oh, he's a great guy. My wife asked if I was all right, which was weird because I'm obviously happy. Uh, yeah, that one's not too bad. Why did the crab never share? Because he's shellfish. I'm only familiar with 25 letters in the English language. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll give that one a kind of... Mm. I was gonna tell a time traveling joke, but you guys didn't like it. <laughs> I don't know what I was so funny. That was pretty funny. A lady at the store dropped a steak on the floor. Guess she wanted a ground beef. <laughs> uh, what types of jokes are allowed during quarantine? Inside jokes. <laughs> That'll be a classic in like 10 years. I was interrogated over the theft of a barbecue set. Man, they really grilled me. Did you hear about the tornado that hit a cheese factory in France? All that's left is debris. <laughs> uh, although debris about now would taste good probably. Did you hear who was going to direct a new movie about <laughs> the coronavirus? Quentin Quarantino. <laughs> that is a good one. My daughter asked me to put her shoes on, but I'm not sure they would even fit me. I hear it's easy to get ladies not to eat Tide Pods. It's more difficult to deter gents, though. You know what the loudest pet you can get is? A trumpet. <laughs> Did you hear the joke about the coronavirus? Never mind, I don't want to spread it around. Finland just closed its borders. You know what that means. 
No one will be crossing the finish line. So many coronavirus jokes out there. It's a pandemic. <laughs> nice one. Oh, boy. I love dad jokes.